Hey, everyone. Um, so is anybody not here for, for this session? Then maybe move out a bit. Um, or take a seat. All right. Um, my name is Alexander Sack. I'm uh, working for Pantacore. We are uh, making a container engine um, that we hope will be suitable to power any kind of Linux device, embedded device in particular. We are keen on ensuring that whatever we're doing is um, helping the full spectrum of embedded devices. This includes, in particular, low-spec devices as well. So. We are not talking about uh, a Docker and engine and so on. So I wanted to, to see if there are, like, I wanted to meet persons and people that are interested in, in seeing what are modern topics about uh, low spec Linux devices these days and, uh, and, um, and see basically if there, there's a group of, of people there that we could basically work with um, to, to figure out uh, potential challenges that we discover here. We had a similar session in, uh, in uh, San Diego where, um, we try to figure out basically what actually a low spec device is, uh, had some back and forth discussion on it, and uh, then try to, to deep dive through it. So I wanted to repeat it here and see um, what this audience has to say about it. It's more meant to be an interactive session, so it's not just presenting and listening because we need your input, I think. It's about capturing what are, is, are there any issues these days that low-spec devices need to tackle, the Linux community as a whole, are the software components that are missing, uh, is there anything that causes particular pain points for you guys, and uh, then maybe see if there is a the way forward to, to decide on an agenda um, that we as a community could go together, right? So maybe just to open the discussion, there are a few devices here that first I think we should maybe assert what does it mean to be low spec these days. This is a MIPS-based router, I think 16 megabytes storage, 64. Memory, I assume, is that what you guys would define as low spec device? Is that low spec these days, or is that massive amount of? <laughs> it's, uh, it's about the most you can go. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, the smallest you can get on DDRQ memory is 64 or 128 megabytes. So if you go below that, you are either on a really outdated SSD generation, which is the DDR or DDR1, or you are on SRAM, which is actually the fancy one. Nice. That is something new. <laughs> Oh, so there's basically 
a certain price. So if you go for po for price points, there is like a minimum you get, and that's the cheapest. So that's where, where, where the minimum is. And then if you go lower, you have to pay for that. Are there reasons for, for doing that? I mean, power, you said? Right. <laughs> that, that was the, like, the point of the impact of that on all the systems and all that other things. Right. right. Well, well, so, so I used to do a presentation where I, where I had Linux running on Ethereum boxes. Okay. And I said that, that that was feasible when you got to a dollar cost of bitcoin. Because that's about what Ethereum companies make for a coin. And so they'd be willing to put like Minecraft on Ethereum box for a dollar. Right, that was one of the reasons in San Diego people said you would go for low spec to really try to reduce the potential to exploit those things. Um, that's great to hear that you confirm that story so well, but then you might need to pay more for that, I heard, right? So this is, so security is expensive <laughs> if you go low. I mean, all right, so I mean, but I mean, it sounds like in this audience, nobody assumes that this is low spec, right, these days. So I guess, and then obviously this guy is also <laughs> not low spec. I just want to ensure that people agree this is not low spec. Right? It looks embedded, but so I mean, is this embedded though? I mean, I mean, <laughs> so, I mean so. Right, but I, it could be embedded, right? I mean, so, but. Right, those were the ideas that came up in the San Diego workshop, so I mean, maybe we can supplement that, I don't know. So how can you define low spec Linux device? Try a definition. It's the most cost effective device you can get produced these days. Is that what I heard? So what do you see plus plus? we do C plus plus and code bits and jokes. All right. But is there any effective library out there for Linux? I mean, a nice standard C++ library that you would use and that gives you still... I mean, there are like on, uh, there are like Python and JavaScript engines and so on for these, uh, these so-called microcontrollers these days, no? Is it? When? I mean, like in the last two years or three years? Okay, so if, if you allow me to go back to, to 2004, <laughs> I, I once ran a system that was like 10 times as fast. Yeah. So, but 
With X. Sure, that's lying. No. Was it nice? Did it feel good? <laughs> well, I mean, is it something reasonable? You want to put in at some point if there's a hope. If there's hope. This was back when I was like the maintainer putting things. So it was about 120 out of 2,000. But that's memory. What's that, three megabytes of storage or what? What is it? I mean, it, there's a tiny Linux target, right? So that, isn't, isn't that? I mean, I think Michael was talking about that a couple of ELCs back. I mean, so when we talk about San Diego, I mean, it was always the perception when I asked before the session, they all said, oh, we have lots of waste and people are like misbehaving. But then when I looked at the statistics of that, it didn't look like it. It looked like pretty flat. So people are not adding craft and not bloating up the kernel that much, right? Are they? Really? Where are we now? So where are we now? So what is the kernel size? Yeah. Is that, is that but are we talking about memory or the, this the footprint? But there's a lot, right? I mean, I, I mean, all those WRT kernels, they typically are like two or one five and so on that I see. So, I mean, three is bad. I mean, how, what are they doing there? I mean, there's not so many drivers for M86. I mean, yeah, is there? Yeah, right, and just, just. Oh. Without, without trying to work against that trend, right? So that's a good data point. <laughs>
So is there anything someone should invest in to try to prevent that stuff? Or do we care or do we not care about these things? Like, like bloat, naturally occurring bloat because people do not add flags or disable features and so on. So who has a problem to use what? I didn't get that.
So are there valid use, Linux use cases for the SRAM option still for people with Sapphire and so on? I mean, I heard yes, but not really. Right. So you want real runtime tooling to well, do that in a, in a lab environment to see what is not needed on the device and then yeah. strip out the binaries or what? Well, strip the binary. In this case, they didn't actually remove the code. They just compressed the code because mm. they thought it was never going to get executed. And so they have the facility. If it ever did get executed, they have the hook to decompress it and run it. So all the functionality was present, just some of it was just smaller. But isn't it the hypervisor a bit at conflict with the super low spec thing, or do they? So, I mean. I just saw the guy showed me a hypervisor today that was just in case. We, wow, what is it doing? I have no idea. <laughs> 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 it's hypervisor something, right? So, uh, <laughs> might be. I don't. <laughs> That's cool. Right. Okay, so runtime LTO, reducing the kernel size is nice, right? Yeah, I don't know, I mean, it, most of the discussion has been centered around, I think, Linux itself at the moment. So, um, I mean, I, but I, what I kind of heard was, I mean, maybe it's not worth to really poke the Linux tree that much or invest so much because we're pretty good there and in the end, we are only looking for devices that are the cheapest ones that have 64 meg of memory. So maybe we say one way to look at it might be to say, okay, why not say Linux should be just fine to, to basically serving these lowest cost devices that can basically uh, that have an MMU and so on. Um, but with 64 meg of memory, I think the problem is not the kernel anymore, but it would rather be something else, right, more user space topics, potentially, so. The, 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 the yeah, I agree. I mean, I suspect that as well. Um, is a bootloader fine in general? I think so. I mean, I just know that in, in the OpenWRT world, there was a super hacked up bootloader by Qualcomm, and so to get super. Um, I mean, that was on San Diego, the discussion. They said, like, system D, you cannot use for embedded devices. You can? Mm. 
Right. I mean, the one argument that they brought up was basically that in system D it's very hard to also be in charge of the boot order. And um, lots of fiddling, right? Going back and forth and so on. So one thing I personally feel is always bad is networking middlewares in Linux. There is nothing, in my opinion, there that is very comfortable to use and does everything we need. Uh, but that's just my perception. Does anybody feel like networking is great in Linux for, for low embedded devices? Yeah. I mean, but how do you do that? I mean, networking, is it? A lot of scripts? Mm-hmm. Does the system D network D, or is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Does anybody, f I think Bluetooth isn't that bad, right? I think the, the blues, Bluetooth, Blue Z and so on, it's not, I mean, at least when, when we tried to produce a very stripped down version, it was not, it was not very massive in size and graphics, I have no idea if there's anybody doing that on your low spec devices um, and what to use for that, right? I mean, it's with pure toolkits rendering to frame buffer, I guess. And then, But then it's not going through the CPU, right? It's mostly direct. And you have to write directly. Right. Yes. So what do people think about D-Bus on the bus side? Is that, I think lots of components are using that, right? Is that the way to go? Right. So those were the, the components folks said last time we should potentially take a look at, but you guys say system D is great, so. Right. So on the distribution side, I think the situation isn't that bad. I thought there's plenty of options if you can't afford that kind of space that you see here. Um, uh, at this point, I'm looking at flash size here, not at RAM. We're already in the in we are in, the, in this yard of 64 meg RAM, and then those guys usually have like just. They save on storage. I, know. I mean, that's what I see in those routers, right? They have eight megabyte storage, or they have 16. So if you want to do something useful. Well, you, you have no spots. You have like 32 megabytes of RAM and four megabytes of flash, and then you have the reverse. You have four megabytes of RAM and 32 megabytes of flash. But you see those in, in the wild, right? Yeah. What kind of vertical are they in? In which verticals do you see those? Exactly. That's that's one. That's the equation that I have in my. Exactly. And what vertical is that in? I mean, where do they use that? Is it for? 
controlling machines and stuff or what? Battery powered? All right. I think we are kind of running out of time. Don't know. So, wanted to maybe hear from folks. So, is is there anything to do in the low spec segment? I had like good ideas from Tim doing like runtime optimizations of memory for for the kernel. Um, I think networking was one of the middlewares that people agreed have might have problems. I haven't really seriously looked at system B network D because I assume it's not low enough, but I'm happy to do that um, and be convinced otherwise that this is providing us with the APIs that we need. But anyone who wants to add something? But I mean, this open WT always feels for me like a, it's like a great low spec platform itself, but it's also like a very close ecosystem. So it's very hard to take proc D and just add whatever you want. So in, in, because nobody is like speaking the language, I think it's UBUS and so on. But I don't think they have a really good middleware to talk to for networking in particular. I'm not sure if you tried to, you brought them up because of my networking comment. So, so I just know you trigger them through like configs and they have no. All right. Um, okay, I think we can continue discussing at the end.
after the session with whoever wants to do it. But otherwise, uh, thanks for the input. I think I got some good new stuff um, from the audience here. Um, so if you're interested and feel like you would like to contribute or work with some folks on, on certain of these areas, then feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to, to connect you guys in. And uh, then we talk next time, I guess, <laughs> when we're in, in the same, same room. Right. Thanks.